God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. Oh, come, let us worship. The intro psalm is <coughs> number 146, verses 1 to 6, found on page 517 of the prayer book. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. O put not your trust in princes, nor in any child of man. For there is no help in them. For when the breath of man goeth forth, he shall turn again to his earth. And then all his thoughts perish. Blessed is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, and whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, who keepeth his promise forever, who helpeth them to right the suffer wrong, who feedeth the hungry. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. Yea, as long as I have any being, I will sing praises unto my God. Let us pray together with Paul and Matthew. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and an earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God of God Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, the only art of the Lord, the only O Christ of the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect, Epistle, and Gospel for the 16th Sunday of the Trinity are found beginning on page 242, together with the Old Testament blessing. The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church. And because it cannot continue in safety without thy son, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. A reading from the first book of Kings. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. And his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, why have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. 
And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. And the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, see your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the Old Testament reading is Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18, found beginning on page 447. If you remain seated, I invite you to join with me in saying Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18. Turn thee again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. O satisfy us with thy mercy, and that soon. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Come with us again according to the time that thou hast afflicted us, over the years wherein we have suffered adversity. Show thy servants thy work, and their children to thy glory. And let the glorious majesty of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper thou the work of our hands upon us, O prosper thou our hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall, the world is out in. The epistle is written in the third chapter of the epistles of St. Paul to the Ephesians, beginning at the 13th verse. I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the ages, world without end. Amen. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm in Psalm 146, verses 7 to 10, found on page 518. Let us stand and say this together. The Lord looseth men out of prison. The Lord giveth sight to the blind. The Lord raiseth up them that are fallen. The Lord loveth the righteous. He careth for the strangers. He upholdeth the fatherless and widow. As for the way of the ungodly, he turneth it upside down. The Lord thy God of Zion shall be king forevermore and for all generations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the seventh chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the eleventh verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And it came to pass the day after that Jesus went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the region round about. The Gospel of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, 
only one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the and the life of the world to come. Amen. And he delivered him to his mother. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The fact is, we know so very little. We have no idea what her name was. And we have no idea what her son's name was. We don't know the details. We don't know the particular circumstances or realities that brought her to this dark, frightening moment. This day when she walks out of the gate of the city of Nain to bury the lifeless son of her lifeless body of her son. We only know that her husband is dead. And we know that her son, her only begotten son, is now also dead. And perhaps we know something of how bleak her future is, living precariously on the margins of her world, without any form of social security and system in place, without insurance policies or pensions or good career opportunities. Widows were, as we know, forced to rely on their families for support, support that was often lacking, sometimes because the people were just too poor to help, sometimes out of selfishness or neglect. Again and again, we hear the sad, heart-wrenching stories of poor widows in both the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament, such as we hear in this week's Old Testament reading from the first book of Kings, such as we hear elsewhere in Luke's Gospel when we hear the story of a poor widow who gave all she had, her whole living, Jesus says, her two virtually worthless coins into the temple treasury. So perhaps we know something of that. But the rest is left to our imagination. But even there, our imagination helps. We can imagine some of the details that Luke doesn't have in his story. We know that once upon a time, this poor widow was a young girl, so full of life, full of hope and possibility. And we can perhaps imagine that day when as a young woman she became betrothed to a young man. We can perhaps imagine something of their joy, starting a new life together on their wedding day, full of expectation, full of hope, anticipating joyful the life that they would build together. And while we know nothing of their circumstances, we can imagine their dreams, their aspirations, their expectations. And perhaps we can imagine something of the joy they felt when, in due course, a son was born to them. A whole new life, with its own possibilities and potential. A unique person with unique gifts and talents and opportunities. A gift of life, full, even as a tiny baby, full of possibility and potential. And perhaps we can imagine in that moment that woman's contentment, knowing that in a time when women lacked so much of the equality which we quite rightly, quite naturally imagine they ought to have, we can perhaps imagine her peace of mind in that moment, 
knowing that she had a husband to care for her, and now a son to look after her as she grew old. God has been good to her. We can almost imagine her saying, and whatever the cause why she did not have any other children, whether because her husband was now dead as well, her husband died too young, or because she experienced complications and did not have the opportunity to have more children. Even then, she has, in that moment, a measure of success. But by the time we meet her on that dark, depressing day, all of that hope, all of that possibility, all of those dreams are firmly and bitterly gone. Her husband is dead. Now her son is dead. She is on that dark and depressing day, a woman with no future, no hope, no joy. And in fact, even her own life is hanging by a thread. All of her hope is in her past. Her future will be filled with hardship, with loneliness, with disappointment. And in this bleak landscape of sadness and sorrow, we have condensed. In this one person's incredibly sad story, we have condensed the whole story of so much of the world's suffering. A story that speaks of the uncertainty and fear and brokenness of human relationships, the hopelessness and suffering of a world of the poor. But this is a story which we have all, all of us, in one way or another, have at one time or another been part of. No matter who we are, we all have memories of loss, of division, of disappointment. It is part of what it means to be human. This poor widow stands for all of those who have faced the end of something precious. Not just the death of a son or a daughter or a mother or a father or a husband or a wife. But those who have faced the untimely end of relationships because of words said in anger or fear and never taken back, or dreams lost by the carelessness, disregard, the carelessness and disregard of others, or opportunities squandered because of decisions made in fear or doubt. Regret and loss are universal. They come to us all at one time or another. So in so many ways, we walk with this poor widow in the dark shadow of uncertainty and fear that accompanies her. We see what she faces because we too have faced our own sorrows and our own fears. And for all of our individual stories of sadness or loss, we have this story in which we have shared together for the past year and a half. And as we were reminded this past week, we have no clue when all of this COVID business is actually going to be over. And if, even as we pray for an end to all of this, we can't even imagine what the long-term consequences are going to be. We've heard a little bit about what they call long COVID, about the long-term physical consequences of the virus. But what do we know about the long-term social and psychological consequences? Last week, Jesus told us in the Gospel, he told us in the Gospel, not to be anxious about tomorrow. But let's be real. How can we not be worried in the face of so much social disorder and darkness? But it is precisely in moments of darkness and uncertainty, these moments of doubt and disorder, these moments when it seems in our hearts that God has forgotten us or abandoned us, or heaven forbid, that we begin to imagine that God is nothing more than vain hope. It is precisely in such moments that this week's gospel speaks powerfully. There is no way of dressing up the tragedy of the widow of Nain. No way of rationalizing our way out of the darkness. There's no catchy phrase to soothe the reality of her loss. Sometimes things are just terrible. Sometimes things are full of bitterness and sorrow, and no pretty bow will make it any better. Unless, of course, Jesus walks in. 
In this week's gospel, we hear of two crowds in conflict, in physical conflict, one weeping and one wailing, the other filled with excitement and hope. So we see in this week's gospel the intersection of life and death. And perhaps you've noticed that whenever these two come together in conflict, almost always death inevitably wins. That is the way of the world. That is what it means to be human. Except, of course, when Jesus walks in. Every time Jesus encounters death, death has to retreat. It has to turn back and flee. The daughter of Jairus, the son of the widow of Nain, and later on in his journey and in his ministry, later on, his friend Lazarus. Jesus comes into the midst of death, and sorrow, and disappointment, and he walks into the middle of all of our trials and fears, and he overcomes all of them. He takes it all upon himself, and he overcomes. Sorrow and loss and death have no power against him. So where does our hope lie, even in the midst of so much disorder? Not in any human power. Our small victories are only ever temporary victories. Disappointments come, and uncertainty reigns. But Christ will take every disappointment, every tragedy, every sadness on himself. And he will one day say to us what he that day said to that young man. Young man, young woman, I say to thee, arise. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power, this day and forevermore. Amen. Blessed is he that considereth the poor and needy. The Lord shall deliver him in the time of trouble. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee and of thine Lord. We offer this holy Eucharist the praise and glory of Almighty God, thanksgiving for the hope that we have in our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and for the new life which we have in Him and in Him alone. Let us pray this day for all those who walk in darkness and in fear. Let us pray that they might know and see the light of Christ, and by our actions and words, by all that we do and say, they might encounter the power and the hope of the risen Christ. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints that we may share with them in, in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our Archbishop, and Paul, our missionary at Bishop McAllister College in Uganda, 
for Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Paul in Ghana, for Canon Ross Head and the people of our sister parish, the parish of St. Peter, and for all our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Anglican Communion, for our fellow Christians everywhere, for our sisters and brothers in the Roman Catholic Church, and Pope Francis, the Bishop of Rome, for our sisters and brothers in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, and Bishop Michael Pierce, Bishop of the Eastern Synod, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity, that preserve from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. For the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people of Canada, for all those who struggle every day for healing and reconciliation, for those who cope with the effects of systemic racism and abuse, for all those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened and endangered by the climate change crisis, and for a collective will to use all our natural resources carefully and responsibly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Syria, Iraq, Ukraine, Haiti, and Afghanistan. For all the members of the Canadian Armed Forces as they serve at home and away to bring peace and safety to troubled regions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for the sick, especially Dorothy, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Lyman, Diane, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Joy, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, William, Griffin, Dale, May, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Cedric, Scott, Sarah, Christopher, Ben, Michael, Pat, Philip, Terry, Aiden, Lisa, Greg, Rayal, Marie, Pius, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Charles, Adam, Eric, Paige, Shane, Rochelle, Sherry, Randy, Melanie's, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Subro, Shelley, Joey, John, Jennifer, Doug, Muriel, Gary, Pearl, Mindy, Mary, Alda, Keith, Jean, Judy, Elizabeth, Kermit, Elliot, Martha, Tammy, Josh, Lorne, Tara, Esther, Colleen, Kaylee, Mark, Kathleen, Debbie, Carrie, Katie, Vicki, Carolyn, Yvonne, Margaret, Tom, Terry, Rob, Sandra, Stella, Pam, Cato, Allison, Murray, George, and for those who are responsible for their care. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, <clears throat> and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways. Chelsea, Aaron, Courtney, Vanden, Bobby Joe, Georgia, K, 
Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Donna, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sandra, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Carrie, Sean, Amanda, Bethany, Angie, Brooklyn, Megan, Lynn, Mackenzie, Jennifer, Mark, Nathan, Jolene, Kyla. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, especially Avis Bruce, Debbie Davis, John Rainier, Catherine Cloutier, Matthew Goodline, Paisley Sylvia Sage, Pertley Walker, Faye Campbell, De Sadie Donovan, Deborah Ann Monteith, Edith Maud Nutter. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. We like the perpetual sign of them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, make thee kneeling on your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. <clears throat> Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice 
oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble service with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy Father the goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this side able of merciful heart, trusting in our own righteousness, and in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs in thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls are with his most precious love, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Yeah. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for you to preserve the body and soul of our Master. So can you this and give us the Christ to die for you to appear on your own heart by faith with thanksgiving? The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for you. 
preserve your body and soul as an asset. Take any wisdom and the current life to you, and feed on him in your heart by faith the past day. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for you, preserve your body and soul as an asset. Take any wisdom and the current life to you, and feed on him in your heart by faith the past day. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given for you to preserve your body and soul as everlasting life. Take and eat this in the that Christ dies for you, and feed up in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is given for you to preserve your body and soul as everlasting life. Take and eat this in the that Christ dies for you. And feed on him your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Take and eat this in the that Christ died for you, and feed on him your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you, preserve your body and soul of everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and hearts, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice to thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we would seek thee to accept this, our bounty and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be our honor and glory. We're up that end. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among and remain with you always. The Lord be with you. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen.